Hey, hope you're having a good Tuesday. Thank you for joining me for today's Five for Five. All this week, we are going through the book of James. All five pastors, five days this week, uh, looking at the book of James one chapter at a time. And uh, we want to encourage you to read along with us. So if you missed yesterday's, go back and watch after this. You can see Pastor Brooks as he looks at James chapter one. And I'll be looking at James chapter two today, and we're going to be jumping into the word right there. And so join with us each day this week and read along with us. And even if we don't cover every verse in the chapter, we want to encourage you to read all those verses. And then by the end of the week, you'll have the whole book read. Not a very hard task, but a great task um, regardless. Uh, whether you've read the book of James many times, maybe memorized parts of it, or whether this is the first time jumping into the word, we want to encourage you to do this this week. So we're looking at James chapter two today. And in James chapter two, the first half is connected to the second half. And one of the ways it's connected, the strongest way it's connected, is how we as believers love and care for each other, especially those who have greatest need among us. In James chapter two, verses one through 13, James is talking to the church, probably a group of people who would have gathered together in a home and they would come together for worship. And he he actually is giving them some, some words of admonition, some words of some correction to say, be careful not to show favoritism to the wealthy among you, to the rich who come into your assembly, and, and to then show some sort of prejudice to those who are poor. And he gives an exact example of how this could happen, of giving a preferred seat up north, near the front for those who have money and those who have riches and resources, while also looking down on the poor person and treating them like a servant. Within the church at this time, it wasn't uncommon for people to be bond servants or slaves or servants of masters. And within the church, there were many people who found themselves in a poor state and they couldn't just revolutionize the whole Roman world. They couldn't change everything immediately. They were following Jesus in the midst of the culture they were in. And in that time, James is challenging the believers to live out a different ethic than the world around them, to live out in a different way. In verses 1 through 13, he says, be careful not to show favoritism to those who are wealthy. And remember that it's often the rich who treat you the worst out in the world. And so in James' case and the church's case, he's encouraging them to not look out the outward appearance. But it's also a reflection of, of picking up from chapter 1 where it says we're supposed to be doers of the word, where now he is taking that theme to say in the rest of James 2 to say that we need to be careful that we are acting out the faith that we say that we have. In James chapter 2, verse 14, he says, What good is it, my brothers, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can that faith save him? If a brother or sister is poorly clothed and lacking in daily food, and one of you says to them, Go in peace, be warmed and filled, without giving them the things needed for the body, what good is that? So also, faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. And the reason I say that chapter 2 is all connected around this view of how we treat each other within the body of Christ and looking at those who maybe have less than others of us among us in the assembly of God is to say that that here in in the rest of chapter 2 he uses that as the example of what faith and works look like that we can say we have faith all day but if our faith does not translate into actions if it does not translate into good works done for someone else in their in the name of Jesus and for their good then ultimately our faith really counts for nothing at all in verse 18, he says, Someone will say, You have faith, I have works. James says, Show me your faith apart from your works, and I will show you my faith by my works. We can say all day that we love Jesus. We can say all day that we believe in him, we trust in him. But ultimately, it comes down to what are we going to do with the faith that he's given to us? Some people look at this. Uh, people throughout history have had trouble with this over the last 2,000 years, the words of James to say, how does this match up when we're saved by grace through faith? How does this match? What does this mean? Well, Paul himself says in Ephesians that, that we are Christ's workmanship. We are created in him for good works. We are saved by grace through faith. We trust in Jesus Christ alone for our salvation. But if we truly follow Jesus Christ, it's going to work out in us the works that he has called us to do. The actions that are going to impact our neighbors, the people in our church, and the people we come across. So I want to challenge you today, challenge you this week. Be open and listening to the needs around you, to the people in your community and the people within this church that may have needs. And look and pray for ways that God would have you to put your faith into action and to let your faith live out in the life that you live around you. Hope you have a great day.